Hi, this is Simon Squire with Only SP, and today I'm reviewing Rise, Son of Rome on the Xbox One. Rise, Son of Rome follows the tale of Roman general Marius Titus. The story takes place in a massive battle in the streets of Rome, with Marius leading the defense of the city and handling personal protection of Emperor Nero. Upon getting to a secure location, he decides to tell Nero his personal story. Flashback ten years to the start of Marius' military career, and we see him arriving at his family home in Rome to be greeted by his father, who proceeds to tell his son about the legend of Damocles. The story of Damocles is about a Roman centurion, well renowned for his skills in battle. In a massive battle against a large enemy, his three most trusted generals turn tail and run, leaving him to die in a very gruesome manner. Upon reaching the underworld, Damocles is given a new life by the goddess of revenge, and tasked to avenge himself against those that betrayed him. It's explained from that point on that all Roman commanders are given a dagger with an engraving of Damocles' face on the hilt as a warning to always take care of their men, lest the avenging spirit return. After we're told this story, the house of Titus comes under attack by barbarians. After Marius and his father fend off the attackers and experience a large personal tragedy, they head out into the streets of Rome to fend off a larger group of barbarians who are trying to kill members of the Roman government. From then on, Rise becomes a story of war and revenge. It's not the most in-depth story and it won't win any awards for originality, but it plays out well and has some truly epic moments and memorable characters. I can confidently tell you that Rise Son of Rome is one of the most beautiful games I've ever played. I've got my Xbox One hooked up to a 50 inch LG Smart TV and the graphics are very smooth. In my playthrough I saw zero instances of screen tearing, the frame rate only dropped within the first few seconds of a multiplayer game, and I saw texture pop in once and it was very quick. The graphics are amazing, lighting is realistic, textures are fine, character models move fluidly and realistically, and swords and armor glint very convincingly in different lighting. Let's talk about gameplay. A lot of critics and gamers alike were quick to hate on Rise when it was first shown for what seemed to be like a game based on endless quick time events. Having played through the single player game twice and thoroughly enjoyed the multiplayer, I really don't see what all the fussing is about. Yes, there are quick time events, but they merge seamlessly with the sword play in a game that you barely notice. The controls are simple, you use D-pad to select power-ups, right shoulder button activates focus, A is to deflect attacks with your shields, B is to dodge, X is for light attacks with your sword, and Y is to bash enemies with your shield. Once you've hit your opponent enough times, or have them in a precarious position, a skull will appear above their head. This signals you to pull the right trigger for an execution move. The moves are not combinations you have to remember. They're context sensitive to the surroundings, and the brutality of them is determined by how high your combo meter is. By executing an opponent, his body will flash either yellow or blue. If you time your button pressures properly, you'll get a bonus experience point, which can be used for upgrades. There's new, no penalty for missing button presses, and the execution happens either way, but you will miss out on experience if you're not careful. <clears throat> As this game is a launch title, naturally I have a few gripes about Rise. They aren't game-breaking, mostly, but they can become annoying. The smallest gripe that I have is that single player is too short. I beat it in a six hour setting, and aside from a few scattered collectibles, it really wasn't replayable unless you want to feel awesome by starting the story with all the unlocks. Sometimes characters will disappear in combat. There are some clipping issues that sometimes end up with enemies half stuck in walls, and a few instances where the connect voice commands do not work. There's, these are all a few minor complaints that can be usually overlooked. There is one bug that happens very frequently in the cooperative multiplayer mode that needs to be addressed. Co-op multiplayer is a coliseum mode where you and a friend take on multiple bad guys in waves. On several occasions, while playing through the waves of barbarians with friends, we would find that the last bad guy would, to die would end up freezing in place. With no way to kill this character, the game would no longer be able to move forward and it would be stuck, and the only way to be able to get around it would be to quit the game and go back, meaning you would lose your progress and experience, and you'd be forfeiting any bonuses, experience, or gold. Rise of Son of Rome is a fun game, with great graphics, a decent story, with terrific voice acting and motion capture. The combat is simple and fun without overdoing it on the quick time events, the upgrade system is simple, intuitive, and challenges players to get as much experience as possible without being frustrating. There are a few glitches and bugs in the game, but aside from one nasty glitch during multiplayer, it's all around a very functional and fluid experience. Out of all the launch titles on the Xbox One that I've played so far, this one is my favorite, and one of the best experiences in gaming I've had in a long time. I highly recommend this as a purchase for anyone adopting the Xbox One as their go-to next-gen console. My only single-player uh, score on this is the following. Story, 7 out of 10. Gameplay design, 9 out of 10. Visuals, 10 out of 10. Sound, 10 out of 10. Lasting appeal, 8 out of 10 with an overall score of 8 out of 10. Please check out OnlySP.com for the full review. I'm Simon Squire, and have a great day.